I wanted to introduce you guys to some of our friends that we've been supporting um, through prayer because I know that this church prays. And so I wanted you to meet them and some of their friends that they brought along. They're going to talk to us about what they're doing. And uh, anyhow, so H.J. and Joy, would you guys come up here? And I wanted to uh, introduce you. This is, um, his name is Hyberjan Falsert. And he's from Holland. But he does speak a little English. Oh, actually, he speaks a lot of English. Could you stay and translate? I can stay and translate. <laughs> so I call him my somewhat short and definitely chubby friend. But <laughs> we're very good friends. Um, Joy, his wife, I've known since she was a baby. Um, they have a passion for God. They used to live here in Spruce Pine about three to four years ago. And they've got a little house up here that we manage for them. And... Uh, they're in Colorado Springs now, but I'll just turn the time over to them, and they can tell you what they're doing. Yes. Thank you so much for having us here today. Appreciate it. Um, our oldest daughter, she's at the kids. She is actually was born here in Spruce Pine, so Spruce Pine will always have special sp a special spot, sp place, spot, place in my heart, <laughs> in our hearts. Uh, as Kenny said, I'm from the Netherlands. I don't know if you know this, if you're aware of this, but uh, the Netherlands are going to go against America this afternoon. In, in, in what's in what in what soccer. soccer yeah women's soccer so sorry for you guys you are gonna lose <laughs> I, I don't know what's gonna happen but you know whatever is gonna happen God is gonna have the glory so so it'll probably be the states in that matter anyway so um, we live in Colorado Springs you guessed it that's in Colorado and um, um, let me think um, what we do there is we are with Youth with a Mission, uh, YWAM, and so that basically is a mission organization that trains young people to become missionaries. And so um, we have a lot of different schools, there are six month programs that are going on our campus. Uh, our campus is an old hotel, it has, um, it's very big, it used to be Hilton. We have a playground, we have a swimming pool, so for the missionary life it's, uh, it's you know, it's up there. And, and so. We do live in two old hotel rooms, so that's not, not super exciting. But, um, you know, we do have a bed, and so we're, we're, we're good. We're good. <laughs> but uh, when we moved to Colorado Springs, me and my family, um, we really didn't know what God had for us. Um, but then when we, we've been there for three years, and we've really heard God speak to us that he has called us uh, to, the, to the vulnerable, to the exploited. And... Um, in a really amazing way that has kind of like played out in both my life and in both my, my wife's uh, life. So I work right now with a ministry that's called Kairos Traders. And what we do is we sell products from businesses that um, employ either the survivors of human trafficking or then the vulnerable to prevent human trafficking. And so, um, and Matt, well, actually, Matt is actually the, the, the one that founded Kairos Trade, so he'll come up and explain a little bit about that. Um, but then my wife, uh, with Matt's wife, Heather, which is, they're right here. Say hello. Uh, <laughs> uh, they have five children, um, and one of them is actually his birthday. Is he around? Oh, he's in the back. Okay, well, anyway, today is his birthday. Um, it's a very, very special day for him. <laughs> Anyway, so um, my wife and Heather, they have a local ministry in Colorado Springs where they pray a lot and they go to the massage parlors, which, which are often the front for prostitution. And so God has called us out. Uh, so the, the Cairo Strategy is primarily in Southeast Asia where all the businesses are and all the, all the people that we work with. And then at the, at the same time, Joy and Heather, they are working locally where we are right here. So. I'd like to encourage you, you know, you can do whatever God calls you to do wh right where you're at. And uh, you don't have to be a missionary. You don't have to be, you know, living in Africa or f sleeping on the floor or whatever. You know, you, you can do it right here. And as it sounds, you know, you are doing it right here, and that's awesome, and we really appreciate it. Um, that's it for me. So let's, let's come up, Matt, and he will just exp he is He is a lot better looking than I am, so, you know. Oh, my gosh. It's <laughs> I'm always nervous when H.J. has the mic because I don't know what he's going to say. But, uh, um, yeah, it's so great to be here with you guys this morning. Um, just in just this little bit of time, I'm just catching your heart for freedom, the testimonies that I heard, your missional heart, making an impact here. 
and uh, and I think that what I have to share just goes along with that, with what you guys are are already living and embodying. So, um, like Ishe mentioned, um, my wife and I are missionaries with YWAM, Youth with a Mission. We've been in YWAM for 16 years. Six of those years we spent in China. In the past few years, we've been here or here in Colorado Springs. Um, and three years ago, I launched Kairos Traders as a way of helping fight human trafficking. So I wanted to take just a few minutes to share a little bit about that, what that looks like, how we do that, and we'll be around. So if you have follow-up questions, please come say hi, get to know us, and, and uh, help me fill in the gaps of anything I missed this morning. But um, I think our story and our mission are best caught with a story a story of um, a human trafficking. And so the story is about a girl named Maya who grew up in Nepal, in a very, very poor region of Nepal. Uh, so poor that the annual income for a family there is only $180 US for the entire year. Uh, if you can imagine, if if you're a parent, you know, you, you're trying to, you know, take care of your family on 50 cents a day. I, I just, I can't imagine the struggle that that these folks are going through. And people know that poverty, they know that vulnerability, and they go in and exploit it, unfortunately. And so Maya's family was exploited. And what, how that happened was a group of people came to her family and said, we want to give Maya a job in Kathmandu, working at a carpet factory, where she can actually send you home $10 a month and have a good job and in all these things, in Maya's family, who's in a desperate situation, they're in crisis, they maybe saw this as a lifeline. And they agreed to that. They sold their daughter, a 15-year-old girl, for $55 to this group. And it was a lie. They, were, they, they conned them. They tricked them. Within days, she was trafficked into a brothel in northern India where she began living an existence that none of us would want to imagine, none of us could imagine would want to. And so for the next few years, her life was, she was um, um, a sex trafficking victim in a brothel. No control over her life. Uh, by the time she was in her early 20s, um, her health was really poor, and the person who owned her, the brothel owner, um, let her actually reach out to her family. And when she did, her father said, we don't want you. Don't come home. You're diseased. We can't, you, we can't marry you. You'll only bring shame to our family. Don't come home. And I think about Maya's story because what we're doing is helping engage this issue in one of two ways. What if Maya's family had a job? What if her parents had a stable income and could provide for their families? I believe that she would have never had to live through that awful, awful situation. In fact, businesses we work with say, if you can give a parent a job, you do not have to tell them not to sell their child. They just won't. And so I believe Maya's family or her situation would have been different had they had a job. And so we work um, with businesses that are doing that. They're providing jobs for folks that are in impoverished situations or in vulnerable situations. And those jobs are actually preventing human trafficking from happening. They're preventing these kids from being sold into these awful situations. Because we know that is not the kingdom of God. Slavery, trafficking, abuse, oppression, none of those things are in line with who God is. And if it's not in line with who he is, we as a church, we want to work against that. We want to see the kingdom of God come to earth as it is in heaven. We want to fulfill the prayer of Jesus when he says that. And I know those things don't exist there. Those things are not happening there. And so they should not be happening here. And so some of the businesses we work with are on the prevention end, stopping that before it happens. I also think about Maya's story because what hope does Maya have now? She's still a young woman in her early 20s. She has no family. She's gone through trauma. What hope is there for her? I have to believe that there's hope. I 
have to believe that there's more for her life. And so what we actually see is businesses, missionaries going out and employing survivors of human trafficking, giving them a safe place to rebuild their life. And so some of the businesses we work with are doing that. One of them is called Perna, and they're also in Kathmandu, Nepal. What they, what they did is they went to the local shelters and they asked them, what do you need? Not just assuming or presuming what they should do or what they need. And they said, we need jobs. That was their felt need. And so that business was created to meet that need. In fact, one of the women they hired actually lived in that shelter for 15 years. Now, her life was obviously much better in that shelter, but that's not the freedom that God has for her. He has so much more. He has so much more to teach her and grow her and that her hands could actually make beautiful things and bring the kingdom of God. And so, um, yeah, HJ and I work very hard at this. Uh, Kairos Traders was started to promote those businesses. So we go to events and we sell these products. We sell them from our YWAM campus. HJ last year worked very hard at launching our online store. I know some of you guys have gotten things from that. Um, and right now we're on our uh, tour this summer, going to different Christian music festivals, setting up our booth, telling our story, giving you, giving people opportunity to engage this issue with their purchase. Because your purchase is creating those opportunities that I just mentioned. And so that's a little bit about our story. That's a little bit about what we're doing, what we're passionate about. And uh, like Ken said, you guys are a praying church. We invite your prayers. Just that we continue to have influence in this area, that we continue to have impact in this area. And I'll just just end with one thing um, about why our why our work matters and why it's important. Um, Perna, the company I mentioned to you, they actually made that bag that was sitting there. Yeah, you can hold that up. Perna made that bag. So beautiful bag, high quality. Um, something I heard them say, and this will stick with me for many, many years, is this. Now, they have 70 or 80 Nepali staff, but they said to, to us, the hardest day for us is when we have five job openings and we go to the shelter and we listen to 25 of the most awful stories. And they have to go home that night and they have to decide which five get a second chance today. I can't imagine. I can't imagine that burden. I can't imagine that, that sadness of having to say no to 20. And so we want to work hard so that they can go and employ more people make a bigger impact and do what God has called them to in the nations. So that's why we do what we do. Uh, again, we'll be around. If you guys have questions, we'd love to chat with you more. So thank you for letting me share this morning, you guys. Thanks, Mike. That's awesome. Thank you, Lord. So now you guys are going to have, you're going to have a little table set up with some things out there. So it, being that we're a little hide on space they're going to be out right outside so stop by visit let's support them i mean my gosh i mean you think about well they're in colorado springs we don't know those people you know we don't have any but i know i mean amber was telling me this morning she works with the department of social services you know there's cases of this very thing happening right here in mitchell county right now so we're not, even though we're a little small mountain area, we're not, <laughs> we're not outside of all the stuff that's going on in the world. 